Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video covering two of the most popular data streaming tools out on the market today. Uh, and they're both Apache projects, Apache Kafka and Apache Flink. Um, so I've made a video kind of comparing a lot of different streaming tools, but today I really want to do a focused comparison on Kafka versus Flink because I think a lot of the time they get kind of confused for being more similar than they actually are under the hood. Um, so that's really what I want to explore today is going through the basics of what is Kafka, what is Flink, what differentiates them, and then give you all the information you need to decide, hey, which one is the right tool for me uh, so that you're not spending a lot of time trying to crib Kafka into a Flink use case or Flink into a Kafka use case. So really great video, whether you're exploring, uh, you know, changing your dating, uh, data streaming tool or even just exploring adding one to your stack uh, for the first time. So hope you enjoy, and without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first tool I wanna to talk about is Apache Kafka. So Apache Kafka is a distributed streaming platform that is really focused on building real-time data pipelines and having an event-driven architecture. And so at its core, and what you're seeing up here on the screen, is a publish-subscribe model, where you have applications that act either as producers on the left side or consumers of data streams. Then producers are responsible for publishing data to Kafka topics, which you can kind of think of as a bucket for the generation of data that is then consumed. And these Kafka topics are, log are organized into logical units like each individual message. Um, and then each topic is divided into partitions. So you can actually have a topic that has many parallel pipelines all consuming similar types of data. Let's say a parallel pipeline for both the producer A's messages and for producer B's messages. And then this allows Kafka to scale horizontally by continually adding more and more horizontal pipelines and handle high throughput message traffic by distributing that data across multiple broker systems. And that's referring to the underlying compute engines that are actually powering uh, Kafka. Then on the other end of the pipeline, consumers will subscribe to these topics to retrieve data. So this, every time a message is brought as produced from the producer message, it goes through the broker through that topic, and then the consumer will pick up that generated message after it's gone through whatever transformations you have incorporated into that topic. So this gives them access to real, both real-time and historical streams, and Kafka brokers coordinate mes message distribution and ensure the durability of each partition, making sure everything stays organized, and an essential component of its, uh, the Kafka's actual architecture is Apache Zookeeper, which handles all the underlying coordination tasks like managing the metadata and leader election for you know, which uh, topic is going to consume which data. Now, with Apache Flink, the setup is a little bit different. Apache Flink is designed as a stream processing framework with a strong emphasis on stateful and event time processing, which means a second an event is created, it's then processed. And so Flink's architecture centers around this job manager you're seeing in the center that coordinates the execution of data streams and task managers that are responsible for the actual computation and the transformation of that data. This job manager oversees you know, resource allocation to various transformation engines, uh, powers the actual streams that are being generated, and introduces things like fault tolerance, checkpointing, and provides metadata for the entire streaming system. Then these task managers will break down tasks into smaller parallel operators, which enables efficient scaling in a similar but slightly different way from how Kafka does it. Now where Flink really distinguishes itself is through its advanced state management capabilities and ability to achieve exactly one state consistency, which means edge data is one data point is produced, that one data point is processed, and then that one data point is consumed. Um, and that all happens exactly once. So this is because Flink's architecture provides native support for event time processing. And that's also essential for handling data that arrives late or out of order, because even if it arrives late, it still will be processed because it eventually is being generated. It doesn't rely on, hey, I expect this data to be generated at this point in time. It's just saying every time a data point originates from this producer system, I'm gonna consume it, I'm gonna perform this set of transformations on it, and then I'm going to feed it out to a database, to an application, to another stream, to wherever I'm bringing that data out to. So now that I've given you a basic rundown of how they function, I also wanna talk about the development model for each application, because it's very important. When you're working with a system, you're gonna be developing on it a lot, and if it's got a development flow that doesn't make sense to you, it's just gonna introduce additional complexity and pain that is gonna make you not make full use of the system. Um, and so 
Kafka is really centered around providing different APIs that facilitate the development of applications for both message streaming and data processing and really takes an API driven approach. These producer and consumer APIs form the backbone of Kafka's data ingestion and consumption processes, which allows developers to publish or subscribe messages in, in a topic in a loosely coupled way. Because if you want to add a new consumer API endpoint, all you need to do is have that consumer API ping the uh, message broker to uh, consume any data from them to subscribe to it. And it doesn't necessarily, that broker doesn't even need to know that that consumer exists. So that if you need to remove that consumer or add another one, uh, you can easily do that without needing to actually alter the core broker. And the Kafka Streams API is one of their more recent releases, which builds upon these basic concepts and enables the creation of even more sophisticated streaming applications that can read from uh, not only one, but many Kafka topics and process that data, write the results to other topics, all within the context of Kafka. And then you have the, and this is what you're seeing on here, is the Kafka Connect uh, API. This is basically standardized connectors to integrate with external data systems, just how you would with any kind of API or integration tool. You have pre-built connectors where you input your uh, connection credentials and then can run, start running uh, or producing messages from that system or consuming messages into that system out of the box. Now, Flink is also an API-driven, uh, takes an API-driven approach, but it offers a more comp comprehensive set of APIs tailored for specific use cases in stream processing. So they have the data stream API, which is the primary model for transforming and analyzing data streams and really integrating that transformation and analysis into your data streams rather than in Kafka, where you might not actually be transforming it within Kafka, you're then transforming it downstream in those consumer entities. Um, but the data stream API, you have a high level abstraction for windowing, aggregations, right, doing true event time processing. And then you also have a SQL API, which allows developers to write SQL queries that run directly on top of streams, which offers a much more familiar interface to those who are accustomed to working with uh, relational databases, uh, rather than Kafka, which is kind of its own uh, separate Java-driven entity. Flink's stateful processing model also supports exactly one's consistency through keyed state, operator state, and timers, giving developers really precise control over the actual application state. And then it also comes built in with the complex event processing library, which adds powerful pattern recognition capabilities that simplify the identification of specific event sequences and streams. So you can kind of have that more macro analysis of how your streams are functioning over a longer time period. So now that you have an idea of how both function, their kind of respective development processes, I want to start talking about comparisons. Um, and so here, I want to go over the pros and cons of both Apache Kafka and Apache Flink and just kind of sum up what I was just talking about in more of a direct manner. Um, and so Kafka is a robust event streaming platform that really excels in scalability, performance, and integration capabilities. The key word there is event streaming platform. It doesn't really excel at transformations happening within the Kafka system. It's really good at handling large message volumes, distributing data across many different brokers, can provide really great horizontal scalability, and then also offers, again, high throughput message handling, can store those logs durably. It's really good for processing, or not processing, but consuming uh, large, or producing large amounts of data from just event producers and allowing consumers to stream it in a organized and efficient way. So it's really great for event sourcing, log aggregation, metrics collection, but managing Kafka clusters can be pretty challenging due to the complexity of coordinating brokers and Zookeeper. Um, and also, Kafka streams, and this is kind of compounding like why Kafka isn't really designed for event time processing. It's still a pretty beta tool, and it just doesn't have the comprehensive event processing support that Flink does. It's really excelling at, hey, just t ingesting all this data, bringing it out to other systems, and then letting those other systems kind of do the heavy lifting in terms of transforming it and you know, manipulating that data. Now, Flink, on the other hand, really excels at those kind of first class port event time transformations allowing accurate processing of events that arrive out of order laid and just really allowing exactly once processing um, semantics that ensure consistent state management across the pipeline so this is really great for applications that require strict reliability where you know duplicates just aren't allowed um, and it also provides a flexible api ecosystem that provides many different abstractions for extending flink to like things like low latency and analytics to machine learning complex pattern recognition. Um, so it has a lot of different ways you can extend it and make it even more powerful for some, you know, things like analytics and ML use cases. Um, but on the flip side, 
flank is really hard to run. It requires careful tuning, configuration, you have to optimize the performance of the job and task managers. Um, and it's just going to make its operational overhead higher than simpler systems. So there is kind of a, I wouldn't say, economy of scale with Flink. When you get to a certain point of complexity, when you're doing live stream processing, then you might need Flink. But if you're just starting out in event streaming, Kafka might be an easier uh, kind of introduction to it, especially if you go with a managed solution. Um, and then finally with Flink, it's got really advanced APIs, but because they're so advanced, there's a, kind of a steep learning curve there. So if you're newer to stream processing, it's going to be difficult to get really the maximum value out of those APIs from the start. So to kind of sum it up and give you just some use cases, uh, I have ideas of what are best for Kafka, what are best for Flink. Kafka is best for scenarios with you know really high throughput, scalable event messaging processing, logging events in real time, and serving as a centralized log aggregator where you're bringing in a lot of different sources, aggregating them together, and then piping them out to another system for further processing. And so organizations use Kafka a lot to handle that metrics collection and act as a buffer between those various metrics centering systems and their analysis tools. So you don't have to do the direct point to point connection, which is much, much more brittle. So Kafka, a lot of times is just replacing traditional message brokers due to its durability and ability to decouple system components in a loosely coupled architecture. On the other side, Flink is really well suited for scenarios where low latency, live streaming analytics, accurate event time processing are paramount where you have use cases that require complex event processing, like you know, maybe you're doing live security analysis on and pattern recognition on from cameras. Flink is a great use case for that. Or fraud detection, where you know you maybe might be, let's say you're, near, you're the New York Stock Exchange, you have to analyze all the streams that are going through your systems and identify specific patterns that could uh, you know, indicate fraud or something going wrong through your systems, and you gotta catch that in near real time. Flink is great for that. And it's really ideal for stateful applications that demand that consistent and low latency state management. Um, and also things like data, real-time data enrichment, where your streaming data is correlated with reference data stored in databases or static data sets, because Flink has the compute power necessary to kind of bring those two sides of the house together. So that is all I have for you today. Just wanted to give you a kind of objective look at what both of these systems are best at um, and kind of just clear up a little bit of the conf confusion uh, about people calling them the same thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you have a great, great rest of your day. Data guy out.